Under his fascist reign from 1922 to 1943, Benito Mussolini used cinema as a propaganda tool and heavily censored the industry. After the Second World War, Italian cinema entered its golden period, known as neorealism. Directors like Roberto Rossellini, Vittorio De Sica, Lucino Visconti, and others set stories around the lower working class, showing some of the more economic and moral conditions of post-war Italy. While the main film studio in Italy, Cinecittà, was damaged during the war, directors went to film in the streets, giving their audience a more authentic view of life in Italy. Neo-realist films often featured children as a symbol of hope for the future. Perhaps the most famous example is the Children's Resistance Group in Rome Open City, seen here as they walk off into the distance, signifying that they will carry on the fight towards a better future. Perhaps the most famous neorealist film, Bicycle Thieves by Victoria De Sica, employs non-professional actors to perfection. Lamberto Majorani, who plays the main character, Antonio Ricci, was a worker in a steel factory. Producer David Selznick originally wanted Cary Grant to play the lead role, but it is quite clear that the film would be radically different if a Hollywood star tried to play a struggling lower class Italian worker. It is also important to note that the title of the film, Ladri di Biciclette, is plural. Although sometimes the translation is wrongly stated as the bicycle thief, the plural is an important distinction. It signifies that it is not simply one bike stolen, but a set of systemic issues in which society propels people to do things they think benefit them, but are in fact destructive to both themselves and society. Here, side by side, are scenes from Big Knight on the left and Umberto D on the right. Notice how we are simply shown their morning routines by just letting the camera roll, what Cesare Zavattini called real time. I would even argue that the scene from Big Night, filmed in 1996, has more neorealist qualities than the scene from Umberto D. The camera never cuts, it is just one long take, and there is no music giving us a more authentic feel. In an interview with Charlie Rose, Famed American film director Martin Scorsese discusses how Federico Fellini's 1953 picture Evita Lone influenced his production of Mean Streets exactly 20 years later, as well as Goodfellas. And I, I went to look at the film and I began to realize that um, um, I was aiming towards making pictures about my friends and myself anyway, but that was it. When I finally saw Evita Lone, I said, well, that's the only way. You were confirmed in your own instincts. Absolutely. I mean, if he could do it about Rimini, I could do it about Elizabeth Street. Yeah. And... Um, and also, it, uh, Evie Tolone finds its way into Goodfellas, too. Yes. They introduce the characters the same way. Uh, yes. There's lots of new techniques used. And uh, the relationships of the people to their parents and, and uh, to the girlfriends and uh, the marriage, uh, all of that meant it was almost, it was very, very close to the world I grew up in. Again, Martin Scorsese on how the impact of watching classic neorealist films as a kid helped him make Raging Bull. I wanted to have a very open honest approach to the imagery and the story in the scenes uh, that were not in the ring in Raging Bull and that came a lot from a kind of wiping away of all technique that I had thought about before and going back to sort of an impact that I had when I was about five or six years old having seen Italian neorealist films on TV Paisa and Open City and Bicycle Thief. And here is French director Francois Truffaut explaining how Roberto Rossellini influenced his famous 400 Blows. I'm giving you this introduction to explain that 400 Blows was certainly influenced by Rossellini. 
Non, mon film est 400 couleurs, mais j'y arriverai. Oh, d'accord. <rire> Alors, uh, to follow with Rossellini, you, you follow a character throughout the film. Il n'y a pas de flashback, pas de construction compliquée dans le scénario. <rire> There are no flashbacks, uh, no complicated construction in the scenario. Euh, le scénario est une chose, le scénario de 400 coups est une chose assez intime pour moi. The screenplay of the 400 blows is something rather intimate for me. Donc d'une certaine façon, je n'avais pas besoin de beaucoup de métier pour le mener à bien. So in a certain sense, I didn't really need that much craft in order to lead it to its conclusion. And this is essentially what Cesare Zavattini tries to get across in an interview titled Some Ideas on the Cinema when he says there must be no gap between life and what is on the screen. The most fundamental change Italian neorealism brought to the world of cinema was perhaps shooting on location. Essentially never done prior to this, directors took their cameras to the streets and shot a majority of their films outside of the studio using natural lighting. This was a major innovation in cinema. Another vitally important aspect was the use of non-professional actors. The best way to tell the story of everyday people was to use those same people on the screen. Most essential to a neorealist film is that it portrays a description of daily life usually bringing attention to contemporary issues. In my opinion, the neorealist directors were simply trying to put common stories of the Italian people on the screen. This would go along with Cesare Zavattini's train of thought that the camera should just simply follow subjects through their daily life. Italian neorealism was a defining artistic movement which also came at a very important time in history. The most common characteristics associated with the Italian neorealist movement include the story being about everyday life among the poor and working class, filming on location rather than on sets, the use of non-professional actors and conveying the socio-cultural conditions and struggles of post-war Italy. Neorealism was more than just a cinematic movement. It was a comment and surely a critique on the economic, political, and social atmosphere of Italy after the war. Italian neorealism also inspired many French critics and directors who in turn created the French New Wave of the 1960s. André Bazin, Jean-Luc Godard, François Truffaut, and others wrote in the Cahiers du Cinéma magazine regarding neorealist films before going on to make their own. Italian neorealism became an influence due to its political attitudes, worldview, and film techniques. People should at least take a small interest in Italian neorealism because its contents are fascinating and have also influenced cinema worldwide in many ways. From the French New Wave to Martin Scorsese, the effects of neorealism are still felt throughout cinema today. <laughs>